In Canada's aquaculture sector, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, or DFO, is particularly concerned with helping this industry develop in a sustainable and responsible way. DFO's focus is based on sound science, the importance of research that informs regulatory decision making, ensures healthy aquatic animals, and explores new technologies and innovative techniques to improve aquaculture practices, including the development of better preventative tools. One specific challenge being faced by fish farmers today is sea lice. Sea lice are a natural marine parasite that have been attaching themselves to fish populations for millions of years and continue to affect both farmed and wild fish worldwide. Although not a risk to human life, sea lice have become a troublesome problem in aquaculture, particularly for salmon farmers. They tend to multiply quickly at aquaculture sites in some regions of the country and in large enough numbers could pose health risks to the farmed salmon. So far, different methods have been used to address the issue with mixed results. Fortunately, science offers great promise to help control sea lice at fish farms. Already, we are seeing important progress as researchers look for newer and greener control methods. DFO scientists Dr. Sean Robinson at St. Andrew's Biological Station on the Bay of Fundy and Dr. Chris Pierce at the Pacific Biological Station in Nanaimo, B.C. are working with partners in industry and academia to find alternate solutions for dealing with sea lice. Our research on sea lice right now is, is sort of targeted at coming up with alternative treatments um, than the, the status quo right now. The reason for that research is twofold. One is to try and better understand the, the life history of sea life so that we can intervene and kind of break that cycle. Second of all, we're trying to find additional tools that the industry can use. One set of alternative tools Dr. Robinson is working on are attractants, sensory and behavioral cues that sea lice larvae and juveniles use to find a fish to latch onto. We found that uh, the larvae and even the adults to a certain extent, are attracted to light. It could be white light, um, but we find that they're particularly attracted to blues. We also find that they're also attracted to pheromones. So pheromones are sort of sex attractant chemicals that animals use for communication. And so for sea lice, some of those attractants are probably salmon smell or whatever is, you know, sexy at the time to, uh, to a sea louse. In nature, it helps them find a mate in the industrial world, hopefully it helps them find a trap. Though the traps seem to work well, there is a challenge facing the scientists and their industry partners. And the problem is, is that sea lice aren't the only things out there, and there are, there are relatively low abundances in comparison with the others. So we're gonna to have to refine that to create a more specific attractant that will just draw the sea lice in. There is another, perhaps more promising angle that DFO and their partners in industry and academia are exploring. One of the ideas that we came up with a number of years ago, and in fact it was Dr. Sean Robinson's original idea, we thought maybe we could use filter feeding shellfish around salmon farms as a natural vacuum cleaner to suck up planktonic sea lice larvae and reduce lice populations on the farmed fish. Up till now, we've been primarily focused on doing lab trials, looking to see if these species of uh, filter feeding shellfish can indeed consume sea lice larvae. And the research on both coasts has been very positive. It's shown that all species that we've tested can indeed consume planktonic sea lice larvae. I'm very pleased with the results we have so far. We found in the lab that uh, if we take sea lice into the lab, the egg bearing females, we can produce lots of larvae. We can put those larvae in the tanks with uh, filter feeding shellfish such as uh, the blue mussel. We can put it in with the sea scallop and they will eat lots and lots of larvae. They'll, they'll filter them out of the water, chump them, chump them right up and they digest them so the larvae are gone. That's great. But where do you go from there? Because in the natural environment, out in the field, you have a lot of different things to deal with. Water currents, turbulence, waves, the fish. So the next thing to do after the lab experiments is to follow up with field trials, which is what we're actually doing right now. So we have commercial scale quantities of filter feeding shellfish set up at a commercial salmon farm around certain pens. And over time, we're gonna be monitoring planktonic sea lice levels 
sea lice larvae levels, as well as adult lice on the fish in both experimental cages that have the shellfish around them and compare those numbers with numbers in control pens without shellfish to see if there's any difference in either the planktonic lice larval levels or the adult lice levels on the fish. These two areas of research, traps and filter feeders, are aimed at sea lice in their early growth stages. DFO and its partners are also starting to work on other ways to reduce sea lice who've made it through to the adult stage. On that strategy, we're using sort of predators of those, and those would be things like the cleaner fish. And a lot of those fish are like wrasse in the wrasse family. And we're using similar fish here, so the, the cunner that we, that's local, and that will pick off some of the adult lice, particularly the large egg-bearing females. And uh, there's another fish as well called the uh, lumpfish. And it's a, it's a small, cute little fish, kind of looks like Nemo a bit maybe, but it sticks on the side of the, the, the salmon and it can actually pick off some of the lice. The question may be asked, is the challenging relationship between sea lice and aquaculture close to being finally resolved? I'm thinking it's going to be a constant battle. This is a natural species that's out there in the wild. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be an issue for the salmon farmers that they have to deal with. They will probably end up having a variety of potential fixes in their toolbox to address sea lice issues. And so, along with its partners in academia and the aquaculture industry, DFO and its scientists continue their research to find innovative ways to help manage these types of issues using an integrated approach. This investment in essential research will ultimately facilitate improved fish health practices for a growing industry.